This video was originally recorded autumn 2018 at the annual Dr. Nita program at Menlo. To learn more about programs at Menlo Retreat, please visit their website at menlo.org. Put in the together and the space is a toy for him. So once you realize you are in the dream, everything is like that. You are free from time and space and matter. Okay? Remember you are in the dream. <coughs> With that, remember you. what? You are in the dream. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I am just so grateful to both of you, Emma, uh, Tenzin Ma. Thank you both. Um, and I'd like to hear you talk more about the combination of aggression and sexuality. Yeah, and I'd like I'm, to hear... I'm Genla, and he's Gegen Chemola, the big Genla. <laughs> Gegen Chemola. Gegen Chemola. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'd like to hear you talk more about sleep yoga. So since there's only one question, you pick, please. Genla. Sleep yoga... Uh, <coughs> okay. You try with dream yoga for one month, with Amitabha, okay? Every day you listen the mantra, you have the mantra, right? Did you download the mantra? It's good to listen that mantra, then it helps you, you know. It's, it's mantra chant by ourselves, sometimes it takes time, you know, you need time and this and that. What, what Christiana said, I found um, even more helpful than the mantra was I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming, like that, that keeps okay, me Okay, that's over. good too. Then you also, maybe it's good to make it audio, I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming. The thing is, we can say I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming for a few seconds, for one minute, then we are distracted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I told you already, right? Distraction is number one problem. That's why you should marry with dream yoga. You put a <laughs> ring, you put a ring in this finger. To remind, you know, reminder, as a reminder. That's why I call this in dream yoga, finger. This is a married finger, this is dream yoga finger. Dream yoga finger. Okay? It's really important we have a reminder. Uh, yeah, and so this is the second month. Okay, let's say 30 minutes of dream yoga practice every day, minimum. That's your homework. Okay, thank you. 30 minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Uh -huh. I said in German, yeah? I meant it. <laughs> 30 minutes. Yeah. In Italian... 30 minutes, <laughs> it means it can be 3 or 13 or 30, can be also 3 because he said, he said the three, 3 and then 0 is 0, we can live in a minute, <laughs> 3 minutes. Okay, anyway, so then this is the second month here, head chakra, and when you visualize the, the Buddha, uh, Akshobhya here, that's the clear light. So first month is red light. If this is not working, second month is white light. And third month is blue light. That's called the clear light practice. So clear light practice, you visualize on the blue, blue Buddha, blue color, and you dissolve into blue. And then the clear, if clear light happens, it's like you experience this blue space. That's the starting of the how to experience the clear light. Okay? So there is no a blue light, you can see it. You experience blue light because yourself, you are the blue light. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you're okay. Yes? No question. Just wanted to thank the three of you. Christiana, thank you very much for all your teachings with the with the yoga, which is very good. 
And Dr. Nita, thank you for all. She's a great teacher, isn't she? She's great. Thank you. I'm asking her to teach, she's refusing. But now she will do because now she knows everything's a dream. You will do it in the dream, right? Yes. <laughs> um, it's funny because for a dream yoga retreat, I didn't have any dreams. Uh, just but aware while asleep, just sort of like low level light stream, you know, and just in the stream. But what was really incredible was the increase in meditation, uh, visual uh, experience, the samadhi experience. So yesterday I w I'd gone home and uh, I'd done my usual sadhana, connected with Kala Chakra, had done highest yoga tantra, uh, generation phase, completion phase, Zogchen, Mahamudra, and just unimaginable light bliss experience like dying by dissolving into light. Just incredible. Um, so much so, when this happens, I come out and I'm like, how on earth is it I'm still in a human body? How, how on earth is it possible to still be alive, you know, uh, with all the limitations that come with that? And then this morning, it was funny, as I was waking up, I had sort of a waking dream uh, that for me was very poignant because... Um, you know, like a lot of men, and particularly, you know, people who struggle with post-traumatic stress, you know, my primary demon is rage, you know, along with Great Depression. And I had this vision of uh, my demon, and uh, of course he looked very much like Mahakala. And his head was in my lap, right, and I was stroking his hair, right, it was very much like snakes. And I was telling him that he was a good demon, you know, and that everything was okay, right? And, you know, of course, he has great teeth, you know, like tusk, and you know, he sort of snores a bit, right? <laughs> the demon, you know. And for some reason, that was very compelling to me, is this image of uh, reassuring my demon, you know, that everything was okay, that he could go to sleep, you know, and have blissful dreams. So that's sort of what I take away from your retreat, is giving good dreams to your demons <laughs> so they stay asleep. <laughs> but did you know that demon is your central channel? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and also I thought that, the, that he was here. I'm in the central you. channel we have the karmic wind. Yes. So the karmic, actually the karmic wind is the demon. That makes us waves, emotions, all these things. But then if you keep doing the Pumbajan, is the transforming karmic demon, karmic wind into wisdom wind. And so once is karmic wind dissolved into central channel, everything is transformed into wisdom wind. And then there is no darkness, there is only light. So because I think you are doing Kundalini yoga practice, so you are connected with central channel, but it still means you need to purify your karmic wind, lay <clears throat> long. And once this karmic wind dissolves inside the snake, inside of the central channel, and then everything is becoming the, the wisdom wind, then the, the one, the demon, what you saw, it's a Buddha. Yeah. <laughs> I had uh, something similar when I was at dark retreat. I saw a giant snake. I know this snake; it's a demon, and it's talking and sounds like this. But later I realized this is the central channel. This is how the karmic wind, when comes up, it makes us crazy, you know. And then we think something wrong with the mind, but it's energy. That's why it's important to do breathing and doing yoga to control that energy and transform that energy. And then the snake is the light, and that's the Buddha nature. Mm -hmm. I don't have too much to say. I just want to say thank you to both of you. I'm so grateful to find you both and to find this place. And thank you for giving me um, the courage through your humor and your knowledge um, to keep going. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I wanted to share my one experience when I... I'd taken your dream workshop in Seattle in 2014, 
It was just a weekend, it wasn't a retreat. Um, but that really helped me at that time when I lost my partner, because um, I basically said it's all a dream. And it really helped uh, calm any kind of negative uh, feelings about it. And I thought, yay, he's in bliss, how lucky is he? <laughs> and, uh, and, and this uh, week, um, that um, just allowed me to basically um, practice more, but then I really appreciate the empowerment yesterday. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for both. Oh, okay. oh. Uh, thank both of you. I enjoy each of you individually when I get a chance to see you. And together, it's like a double trip. It's really fantastic to see you work together. Thank you. And I have something to say that might influence Christina to think about teaching. Um, I just finished reading an article that John Cabot Zinn wrote last year, I think it's in 17. And he was very concerned about the way mindfulness and um, med meditation and various aspects are being taught now and how much of it is he's concerned about it and he's sort of the person who started the mindfulness movement and we've used that term a little bit but um, I'm not sure I'm concerned too recently I've had a couple of companies people in the city where I live contact me and say how can we connect to good meditation teaching. Well, these are companies that maybe have like 600 people working for them, and they're thinking about ways to do that. And this is in the South. Let's just say we're a tiny bit behind. Not a lot, but you know, a little bit behind. And it, that has concerned me, that these people are looking for teachers and looking for good teachers. I also feel many people are just teaching something that's very superficially meditation. Mm -hmm. And, and that disturbs me. So I wonder if you, thank you again, but I wonder if you have any comment on that, either of you or both of you. Uh, I like the, I think I like the work of Janice Martorano. She's a lady who was, teaches mind, she has a Mindfulness Leadership Institute in New Jersey. So a lot of things for New Jersey. <laughs> and uh, she wrote a recent book called the Finding, this, Finding Your Space to Lead. And I think she does a good, she would do a good job in, with a corporation like that, that you mentioned. And uh, I, there are, I don't know, there are probably many other people also who would, and there are probably a few who would be very superficial. So I guess you, people have to, you know, trial and error, you know. But uh, she in particular, I think, would do a pretty good job of that. Of course, Cabot himself is pretty good at it. And he often, I think, does get hired by different groups to do that. And um, so you can always write him and ask him. No, I mean, I don't know, are you booking for them, the people? Or, <laughs> what? Uh, no, they just know what I do and they know how I have used... Um, do you teach that yourself? No, no. I'm, I'm a college professor. I don't teach it. I've been studying it for about 30 years. Though, and started with uh, when uh, the Dalai Lama brought his monks to Nanga. Uh, I started with, that's where I started mm -hmm. with it. I got my start. But I, I've always used it in a kind of personal way, and sometimes it comes into my teaching because I teach some subjects in Oriental art, Japanese, Chinese, and so they they just know that I know th that I go to retreats, and I also used it during a very 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 difficult part of my life with very positive results. So people, you know, the word gets out. Uh, I think uh, mm -hmm. I think it's important uh, meditation teachers and yoga teachers, I think it's important they have some medical uh, understanding, medical education. Mm -hmm. And very basic, like Western medicine about psychology, knowing better about uh, psychosis, depression, and all this mental part. And then my wish is, I think, in future, the meditation teachers and yoga teachers, they really have to know um, ancient medical science, like Ayurveda, Tibetan medicine, Soharipa. Because for me, I like the Soharipa system, Tibetan medicine system. Tibetan medicine is not saying there's a good meditation for everybody. But everybody can find their own perfect meditation. Mm. 
So then we divide the uh, people in different groups, different types. In an easy way, for example, there are some people, they are wind type, windy ones. Some people are fire type, fire ones. Some people are earth and water, sleepy, slow type. So that's why we should find the different meditations for different type of people. And some people are wind and fire connected together. Wind is blowing, fire is burning, nervousness, angry and this and that. So we have to find a good meditation for them. We should find a good meditation, the sleepy ones and these things. So that's why I think the typological uh, meditation is the perfect way. But then in order to know the typology, people's mentality, different types, I think it's, they really need a better education in the medical system. Absolutely. Even they don't study whole medical system, the foundation, they have to know the foundation. And then I think easy to understand. Because the, the meditation itself, it means, you know, Tibetan word is gom. Gom means to knowing better, the process of knowing, right? Mm -hmm. To become familiar with. Mm -hmm. So if you are a teacher, you have to teach your students, then you have to know your students, you know. What is their, what do you say, mm -hmm. their level, their capacity, their ability, mm -hmm. and what is their mentality. So according to that, if you teach, then it's the, the, the right meditation. So without doing this, I know there's, uh, for example, um, how do you say? For example, today you can read about the Kundalini syndrome. People get symptoms because they do wrong Kundalini. And mindfulness had an effect. Many people get crazy with because they practice mindfulness. Mm -hmm. And uh, Shamatha depression. Uh, and uh, spiritual anxiety, mm -hmm. and uh, Buddhist panic attack. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Gesha, I mean, Yana is just exactly describing the mission of Menra. We are, we do not, we really don't want to be like the kind of mini Kripalu or Omega or something like that, the latest bestseller writer. We, we really want to be a place where someone, a corporation like that, will send, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 people at a time. We will have Tibetan medicine analyzing the different types. We, will have, we, have, we, have, we have, like, a, our Ina Becker, we have a psychiatrist who's a certified yoga teacher and who teaches mindfulness, etc. We sort of, we're slowly getting organized in this direction. We want to partner with Genwa and have some of his students, Eric, Christiana, and others. And, um, you know, there, and there will be other places that too that I think should do that, but our main thing is that sort of thing. That is our, that's the mission of Menla. You know, Menla belongs to Tibet House, which, who, which has the mission of preserving and promoting and presenting Tibetan culture so that people realize its value. And the Tibetan culture is sort of the combination of the meditation and the spiritual, without having to be Buddhist at all, but offering those services in connection with the kind of overview medical, I mean, we're not going to be doing surgery or anything, but I'm saying, you know, the types and this kind of thing, so that you don't put the wrong people into the wrong type of thing. So, again, that's completely describing, I wish I had recorded it, I pulled out my phone too late. It's a perfect description of what we're supposed to be doing here, and we're trying to get organ better organized. So it's only been 15 years, so we have, we do, I mean, we're doing it here in a way, but we're, and we've had corporate retreats here, and people like Kabat-Zinn have come and they rented the place, but we won't do it ourselves, you know. And then sometimes he might come and do something, but this should be the mission of Menla, actually. And, uh, and, and we see, and we, Menla then once, if it shows how to do that, and very successful, then there could be chains of Menla, you know, like golden arches. <laughs> but in, in this case, it would be dark blue, medicine Buddha, Yutoka, wow. not golden arches, turquoise rooms, that's what we Instead of golden arches, you have turquoise roofs everywhere. You talk means turquoise roof, you know. You talk, you're a big So that's perfectly what we want to do. So please send us 
not all 600 at once, but <laughs> maybe 30 or 40 of them, and, different, and see how it goes with them. And then we'll, when we're ready, when we book them, we'll get Glenlock, Glenlock to come, or one of Glenlock people he designates, because he's very busy all over the planet. We get Christiana to come, we get Eric Rosenbusch to come, or I'll come. But I'm more disturbed people. I don't get them to meditate well. I'm more bothered them. So. But sometimes that's good for some people to be more bothered. And I do that. Uh, but uh, this is really what we're supposed to be doing. This is why His Holiness let us do this, and why His Holiness came and blessed the place. He did a Medicine Buddha Empowerment right in this room. And, um, ah, Medicine Buddha Empowerment. In this room, yeah, he did. The, 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 the 51 day, 51 day, 52 day, do you know? Uh, he did, right? So he, we, but that time we had this stage over there, and then there was sort of, the, the whole room was full, that thing, you know. Yeah. As it will be next time when you come and do, with the Lelum, or with or without Lelum, if you can come that night, if not, we do, we do the Bliss Book, you know, definitely. And, and in April, at, at, at the latest, if possible, okay? Thank you, Christina. <laughs> Christiana will, will help us Absolutely. organize. Just very quickly, is there someone at Menla in particular? What's that? Is there someone particularly um, in contact at, at Menla who is interested in booking and, and who should she contact? Who contact? contact? Oh. Oh, contact. Eric, Eric, yes, yes, Eric, yes, yes, yes. Eric Rosenbusch. Who is our contact? No, I'm not contact. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yes, Michael Burbank. Michael Burbank is the one to talk yeah, to. Michael. You know, who was here? Michael Burbank, you know, who's the who's the executive uh, director. Nina is the executive chairwoman, who's really the supervising consciousness of this place. And um, although she really liked it, when I, I'm on the nonprofit board in San Francisco, and we had there a man who was the founder of Hasbro Toys, but the new, close to retirement. And then we had a dinner with our board, and, and um, everyone had to come up with a fun fact about themselves in this. And his fun fact was. Yeah, Alan Hasenfeld, he, he, I'm the executive chairman, he said, of Hasbro Company. He didn't mention he was the founder as well, but he said, I'm the executive chairman. He said, but I want you to know that being an executive you chairman somewhere is like ruling over a cemetery. Yeah. There are a lot of people below you, but better no one is listening. Men <laughs> <laughs> better they just come to so, so she you know, appreciated that, but she is the she's the thing. But but Michael will be the contact for that, absolutely. M Burbank uh, at uh, Michael dot org. Uh, Menla <laughs> dot org. What that? M Burbank at Menla dot org. Oh, thank org. you, Eric. Yeah. This is Eric Rosenbush, uh, who is uh, one of Gemla's senior students, as is Christiana. I think we should. Gemla has many great students. I think we should do this uh, typology analysis. Yes, here. I think that's with, right. uh, absolutely. With Eric with Eric, so we can start this uh, typology analysis and then different type of meditation. That's right, because like if you take someone who tends to depression, who's too bacon oriented, too phlegm, you yeah, know, yeah. earth and water oriented, and then you get them to do shamatha, they're going to pass out. <laughs> and you get a fiery one, and you need, have the yeah, too physical much. one too, you know. Some people, sitting is not good at all. So, you know, in the many meditation, it says everyone sit and sit. The problem is they are already over sitting. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think this typology is very healthy, you know. So hopefully we can make this uh, typology analysis. Yeah. And then according to that, you know, different mm -hmm. meditations for different people. That would be great. Right. Yeah. Also people, like a people diet, are you know. Interested in this also for People to continue when they start working with the company. They start working with the company, and all, everybody in the company drops out after a month or so, and then the company's kind of thrown its money away. Or they go online and pay a lot of money to get an online course for 18 weeks, and it produces nothing. So it's, right. it's an interesting. Some of the online stuff is quite superficial. Yes. Okay. Uh, to quote the Ati Yoga, wow, amazing. <laughs> this has just been terrific. I love coming here. I, this is my first green yoga, but it's been amazing. I uh, love both of you guys. Um, my biggest insight, I think, was driving up the road <laughs> this morning, and I was in a hurry because I felt like I was late. And it was a kind of a backup. And then I saw people kind of walking in the middle of the road. And I thought, what the hell is wrong with you guys? Move over. 
I need to get up to the conference center. And the person in the middle turned around, and it was Dr. Nita. <laughs> and I thought, oh my god, you can run over your guru in the middle of the road. <laughs> it was so freaking profound for me. <laughs> That's how contracted I am. But I still need such basic, basic reminders of how crazy I am. I'm crazy. <laughs> I think you're just fiery. It's okay. Just fiery. I told you, I'm your shoes, so you can run over me. <laughs> oh, never. You know, I appreciate you saying that. but um, So I just thought I had to share that and uh, how much I've loved being How was your Julian experience? Oh, you want me to talk about that? Yes. Uh, so I was here for the longevity retreat oh. um, last summer, and we made flower pills. Oh, yeah. Um, I um, was already sort of leading towards a diet. I had some parasite issues from being in India and um, had a session with Dr. Nita, which she gave me some guidance, but um, I lost 30 pounds after I left here. Oh, okay. 30 uh, pounds. 30 pounds in about six months, more or less. And I went home, I started doing the Nejong yoga every day. For about a month, I was real consistent. I was fasting some, as he suggested. He said, why are you feeding the parasites? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Stop. Stop feeding them. Um, so, but I think the flower pills were extraordinarily helpful. They kind of gave me the resolve or something, or the inner strength to keep going. And it really was like magic. I mean, people were afraid to ask me what was going on because they thought I was sick. You know, and they would say, oh my gosh, I'm, I was so worried about you. I thought maybe you had some disease or something. And I'm like, no, it's like a miracle. Yeah. <laughs> it's so exciting. Because it really was like a miracle. I mean, it just kind of fell off. I, it's shocked me. Right. So, so, yeah, that, thank you. Yeah, again, thank you, yeah. thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. I just have one quick question about how can we, is it okay to share this dream yoga with others? Mm. Or... I mean, it says in your manual, like, it should come from a teacher, you know, from someone who's already knows um, this. If, if, if it helps for somebody, and somebody's serious, of course, you can help them. But don't give uh, teachings the details, because I know people get confused. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But of course, maybe sometimes, some people, they don't know how to handle their nervousness. They don't know how to handle when somebody stops on the road. <laughs> Move on, I'm late, this and that. And maybe you just tell, okay, just imagine you are in the dream. I'm late in the dream. I'm this in the dream. Traffic jam in the dream. Then relax a little bit, you know. So I think we can give that kind of suggestion for people to help. But not specific. Uh, yeah, specific is better than the, it's complicated, you know, because then people have more questions and yeah. this and that, and it can be complicated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you both. Yeah. I'm not, I'm talking into a microphone in my dream, <laughs> yeah. and and I think that's what, like my main insight. And I thought it was coming to learn how to do lucid dream, you know, to, to do the dream yoga, but I think the daytime stuff was even more profound. Um, I think a couple of people mentioned that. Um, and then your story reminds me that next time um, there's somebody cuts me off on the road, I'll say, maybe that's Dr. Nita driving that car. <laughs> um, anyway, I want to thank all of you, I think the three of you and anyone to help organize this. And I do, I do have one uh, question. I'm not sure it's the best question, but it's been in my head for a few days. Which is like once we learn how to like create delicious plates or whatever it is, um, uh, what might be some ways to like uh, to be in service while we, like once we can realize that we're in our dream and we think okay I want to go out there and do some good things, um, are there any simple tips on what how to how to do that? You know, um, so like creating world peace probably is not the best place to start, it might be a bit too big, but any, anything at all that, um, any tips 101 on, on how to do that? You, that you want to help others? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. yes that's Yeah, basically, yes. And which way? 
the dream. In the dream. In the dream. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I do that in my my in my waking dream, and I'm yeah, just yeah. In the dream, of course, also you can do. Yeah. Uh, so I, have, have, I just tell you a very quick uh, my dream. So a uh, couple of years ago, one of our students she was sick, so she texted me. She said, "Can you please pray for me? I am really sick." Actually, she had leukemia, you know. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, I'll pray for you, and then I fall asleep <laughs> without praying. But then in the dream, I become lucid. I said, uh oh, I forgot to pray for her. And I said, I need to pray for her, I need to help her, you know, because she asked me. Then I said, okay, why I pray in the dream? In the dream, I can heal her. Mm. So I called her name, and she's in front of me. And then I, then I thought, okay, you know, she is really sick, and how can I help her? And then when I had this idea, how can I help her? In my hand, there's a, a tea filter. How do you call it? The tea strainer. Tea strainer. 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 Tea strainer. And then I said, okay, tea strainer is small. She's big. How can I do? Then I said, oh, it's a dream. Why I ask a question? Just do it. So I took this. I filtered her. Oh, many times. Did you work with the tea strainer? Yes, yes. Filtered her. Tea strainer is small, she's big, but uh, without uh, asking how and why, I just did it. I filtered, and each time I do this, she goes inside, and I did many times. I said, here you go, I'm praying for you, I'm healing, I'm healing, I'm healing, I'm healing. many times. Next day I wake up, I was a little bit tired. <laughs> And then she texted me, she said, I don't know what prayer you did. She said, I feel so good. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, said, oh. <laughs> I said, maybe you should uh, offer some donations. <laughs> I worked all night. <laughs> yeah, later she went from the mantra therapy and also chemotherapy, everything she's cured. Wow. So all the combination, I think somehow it worked, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks you all. That's great. Cool. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I liked the uh, thing the doctor said about the four parts of mind. I thought that was very helpful. I just want to say, Thank you to everybody, um, you guys, and, and the staff here. Um, Menlo is a special place. Um, we've been coming for a little while, and uh, it feels like visiting old friends. You know, it is, and then making new Dharma friends, too. And um, I had a complementary treatment uh, to my practice. I had the Thai yoga, and I was afraid to do it, and shit's... She, she, uh, they talked me into it. They were like, it's good for you. You could do this. And then it was amazing. It, it kind of changed the whole wind in my body and um, made me more relaxed. But um, I, I've had a lot of dreams here, a ton of dreams. And I always do. And I get home, I feel like people, I don't know, people I know come to me in dreams and ask me to help them. And, to go do things. I'm just, if I'm tired, I just say, hey, can I have a night off? Because I'm tired. I want to sleep <laughs> and not go with you. But um, I had one question for Dr. Nita about the ocean. When you said it's a, um, sort of an unstable thing, you know, your wind. And so why, when you go to the ocean, why is it so calming? Like the blue mind. Why is the ocean so good for your mind? and yourself, but it's also unstable. Because we are an ocean. Mm -hmm. 70 to 80 percent of our body is fluid, water. That's why we like it. Yes, yes. Everybody likes it. Okay. Yes, I think so. Actually, our life is coming from ocean. Our primordial, originally we are coming from ocean. So in Tibetan medicine, you see this art, the painting? It just... Uh, left, your left side. That one is embryology. <laughs> Can you go there to see what animal you see in these little circles? Okay. This, uh, this one yes, yes, that one. So there are like uh, 
a couple is uh, having their fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And then there are little circles. You go yeah. there. What animal you see? Go down. Yes, go down. What animal you see there? It's like a fish and a turtle. And what do you see? Yeah. What do you see there? Fish. Okay. I don't know if I'm far along. There's a fish? There's definitely a fish. Oh, the fish. Okay, oh. fish. And then what you see? Next one is a turtle. Yes, yeah, a turtle. And then there's a pig. Yeah, there's a pig. Yes. And then Americans. <laughs> and then pig. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> so now you know where the Darwin's evolution theory is coming from. Darwin's evolution theory is coming from Tibetan medicine. <laughs> and this text is written in 12th century. Evolution, origin of the life is a fish. That's why even the fetus, you know, when we are conceived and we repeat the billions of years of life history, that's why we call it the fish state and then turtle state. Fish is the animal only stays in the ocean. And then the turtle, both ocean and the land, and then pig only land, and then Americans. <laughs> <laughs> Million years later. So that's why our original home is ocean. And you have the concept. Yes, yes. I, I paid 10 RMB for him to say my name. With the concept. And if you uh, close your ears completely, you hear the ocean sound. That's called the primordial sound. So our primordial home is the ocean. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to say uh, thank you and uh, for the simplicity. I was getting a little frustrated with uh, this, the, some of the teachings being incredibly complex. And the way this was laid out, I feel as though I, I have a practice that is attainable, that I can do, that uh, can give me concrete results. Um, one comment, I can't help but help uh, think that from this experience that our dream world, because I, I came here to have more access to my dreams and be a warrior in my dreams. Uh, not necessarily to be awake during the day, so to speak. Um, and um, anyway, so the, the comment uh, that I have is that on some level I feel as though we have such amazing powers of creativity in the, in the dream world when we are asleep that maybe this waking world is just to keep our bodies alive so that we could dream at night. And be these gods and creators. Good point. Good point. There is a Chinese uh, dream master. He said he was dreaming, and in his dream he was a butterfly. Then he woke up. Then he had a question. He was dreaming the butterfly, or butterflies dreaming him? Yes. So thank you so much. Uh, it's always so wonderful to hear the Dharma, and not one always always learns every time. It's endlessly learning and endlessly inspiring and wonderful. And I wanted to um, say something having nothing to do with this, because Bob always forgets when I ask him to. And that is that um, I'm hoping that all of you, if you enjoy being here, that you could become members of Tibet House, because it's very helpful to us to have membership. And also we are having on December 10, for those of you who live nearby in New York, our annual um, gala dinner at Tibet House, and you can come and visit. And um, you can go online, okay, and find out. And, it, and I would really yeah, appreciate yeah. if you can come to that. But uh, thank you so much. And um, you know, do uh, take that little extra step to be helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, God, you're reminding me. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so it's um, 12 10. Um, you want to keep on going with one or two more questions? I yeah, think maybe we, we finish, we, 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 maybe we finish yeah, quickly in a short way quickly. Yeah. I think it's, it's important to hear from everyone oh. yeah. equally. Yeah. Try to be brief. Yeah. I will. Um, <laughs> thank you to you two um, and Christiana, uh, who's also the teaching mm. that she does is great. Thanks to Justin and the staff. Um, most of the dreams that I have for many years are negative dreams. And um, uh, I don't remember a lot of them, but I wake up every morning sort of disturbed by these negative dreams. So you appeared in my dream, uh, not towards the end, but somewhere in the middle of the night. I don't remember much, but I remember a uh, like a healing, you were a healing presence and a hopeful presence. And uh, I had forgotten uh, as much as I was trying to remember until I saw you today and then I remembered that. So thanks for last night. You're welcome. <laughs> that was an easy joke. <laughs> So I want to say thank you to our teachers here, and um, I think it's been, I came in brand new, had never really studied lucid dreaming or dream yoga, and I love how everything was laid out methodically and very accessibly. What I also appreciate are your stories mm -hmm. and relaying your firsthand experience because it helps me to see that there's really infinite potential in what this practice can do. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> and thank you again to all of you. It's really been uh, helped me really direct my practice. I was in limbo over the summer. Several major changes happened in my life. And Dr. Nita, Tenzin Lot always, and Christiana and Eric uh, really helped profoundly solidify what my future practice will be. And uh, I feel more joyful than I have in a long time. And so I'm very, very grateful. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for giving me a um, whole new important practice, um, daily practice now. I uh, didn't expect it to be this um, profound and important. And it's, I think it will help me integrate everything by the practice it together. One question. When you're tiredness, when you're overly tired, mm -hmm. Is that going to um, affect the ability to do these practices? When you are really tired in daytime, just take a short nap, power nap. <coughs> power nap means 10, 15 minutes. You see, when we do meditation and people are sleepy and tired and they force themselves to do meditation to finish something, it's a it, you know, there is a pressure. You have already life pressure, then there is a meditation pressure. <laughs> yes. And you know, like yes. we have too much uh, pressure and stress, so it's better just accept this uh, tiredness and take a power nap. So in the power nap, or you dream something, or you dream something, or you just go to in the clear light, and then you come back. You are refreshed. So that's also the good thing with dream yoga. It's a kind of very freestyle and you can do any time and any moment. Mm -hmm. And for me, today we should not against the tiredness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are many, many suggestions how to against un anti-tiredness. Mm -hmm. You know, take some pills and wake up and do this mm -hmm. and that. Meditation, just the tiredness is a sign of body or mind and energy. So the best solution is just a rest. Mm -hmm. You know, you rest uh, listening the weapon, the weapon of light for 15 minutes, then you start to, or just to lie down, relax for a few minutes, or take a power nap. My personally, I love power nap. Mm -hmm. So it's a really, really good medicine. I'll try to find a place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Listening to me is very good for instituting a power nap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you put it in for yesterday, I fall asleep. <laughs> so, I want to say thank you, Dr. Herman, thank you, Dr. Nida, thank you, Christiana. 
I'm, I'm back here because I took a seminar with Dr. Nita about a year and a half ago. And that whole year I had Dr. Nita's voice in my head okay. saying all sorts of different little um, <clears throat> indications. And one of them was how to sleep better uh, with, uh, with a nutmeg. And the other was the Nayan yoga. And I'm very happy to hear how to do it with more precision from Christiana again. And I think I was very open to that. And I've been practicing. So um, I came to the dream yoga very scared because I knew that I had a hard time dreaming. Uh, and remembering my dreams, and I was just beginning to remember them. And since I came here, um, I love the fact that in such a joyful and simple and profound way, I am not scared of um, walking into the dream world and the dream yoga now, because it's so simple. It's about mm -hmm. saying, I am dreaming during the daytime practice and the nighttime. And I love the fact that that big division between daytime and nighttime was erased by Dr. Nita from day one. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Mm -hmm. thank you. Not, is nutmeg working? Yes. Uh, yes. Yesterday good. I had it. Nutmeg. Mm. Nutmeg. With milk? Yes. With milk. Remember that. Yes. This one you can help others. If they have, there are so many people, they have sleeping issues, right? because of uh, time pressure, work pressure, stress in the life. Nutmeg is the kitchen remedy and best natural medicine for sleep. How much do you take? One pinch? Yeah, one or two pinches. Two what? Two pinches. Two pinches. In a tea? One milk. In one milk. One milk. So, like everyone else, I have to thank uh, you both for the incredible teaching. And I, I want to thank everybody here, many I met, and just sharing some laughs, conversation, being able to drop into a life moment, and um, really, really important. And Menla, I mean, just thank you so much. I was very surprised. I didn't realize that this was really a whole village. Uh, I imagine one place, but coming here, I feel like I'm living in a, another era. You know, it's it's an incredible experience here, and uh, so I'm really delighted. On the personal note, um, on the practice note, um, I said to Dr. Nita that you know I had Heart Sutra meditations um, 15 years ago, and uh, I dropped into extremely lucid um, experiences on. Um, emptiness retreat and uh, but then many years between doing a lot of practice but this dream yoga just took me right back to those experiences and kind of pointed out how to bridge and practice in life and has opened the doorway to dream and um, so that that to me just kind of the bookends on my dharma journey now I feel this is a new start, really, for me as a practitioner. On a personal note, um, I came up here, the medical side, just with a lot of despair and just feeling like after all these years of practice, how did I end up in such a difficult place in my life? And I knew there was a new start for me. And I feel I'm, I'm at that new start now. So now I, I just, I, a lot of courage. I feel some deeper strength in me coming, is coming forth, and I feel I can be more who I am in a more courageous way. Um, so thank you very much. And my my question is, um, I I for my whole life as a, uh, an artist, uh, poet, uh, just creative person, I've always been able to access visualization, imagination and just daydream. And uh, have, while I've had many memory of dreams, not much lucidity may be possible in the future, but I'll have these like active imagination experiences. And they will go in some incredible places that feel like dreams. So 
So I was wondering if you could speak at all to active imagination during the waking time. Are, are those, where, where would they fit into this? Um, nyam, nyam. 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 And how to use them best. If you are, if you are mindful, then it's good. You know you are imagining. This is your active imagination, then it's good. But sometimes you are imagining and you get lost in this. That one is distracted, then it's not good. Mm. Do you understand? Yeah. Use in the same way in the sense of... Um, dream yoga, yeah. You dream. use the same way of dream yoga. Yeah. Oh, and this connection of like, the dream state seems to open up for me more freedom to explore more bliss, really. Yeah, more yeah. happiness, like something was blocked there. More freedom. freedom. It was too concrete. Exactly. More and freedom. now it feels well, yeah. So that's why also the creation stage, when we visualize ourselves as a Buddha or deity, mm -hmm. so you are transformed and you are able to transform the entire space. Mm -hmm. You are able to help the entire sentient beings. Mm -hmm. You are able to offer the light for all Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. And then they empower you and then you help more. Mm -hmm. So that's like active imagination. Exactly. And creation stage it, are same. Exactly, exactly. Incredible. That's why you have to know that you are imagining. Mm -hmm. Okay? I call it the mother awareness. There is a mother. So you are active running around. That's the baby. Babies are running around and this mother knows babies are running around. Mm -hmm. And do good things. Yeah, and do good things. Yeah, yeah. And this uh, how to help in the dream. Last night I dreamed I don't know exactly where, you know, we are experiencing some tsunamis now, right? Mm -hmm. So I saw there are many young kids, they are drowned in the water. Mm -hmm. so they are almost dying and I helped somebody to guide them to say the kids are drowned there and save them and they saved them their whole life. Mm. Oh. I can't say exactly where but I know that I help somebody's mind saying they are drawing and save them and they were all saved. Wow. This is <laughs> just last night, yeah. So thank you again. Um, it seems like everybody has, you know, most of the questions that I have. Um, so for me, you know, from coming from a medical background, I think you, you know, this whole weekend made me a better physician. Um, I certainly feel that um, um, I have great gratitude um, for what I got from both of you um, during these last few days. And, and I think I'm a perfect example of what you mentioned, Bob, about um, a physician who is kind of restrained and, <coughs> and prevented to be creative. And I think what I learned this weekend is um, maybe being creative in my dream and bringing that into my uh, daily life would be something that that would make me even personally to grow and um, so by being the, the most novice here it seemed like this is my second retreat ever in my life um, so can you just explain to me when you do a mantra meditation um, you, you feel like you're breathing in through your side channels and are you breathing out from your central channel is that a correct statement or Breathing out happens whatever it happens. Is there any particular way of breathing in through the side channels and breathing out through your central channel? Is this, that uh, the, this one is uh, when you inhale is inhaling only right and the left and this is both together. But when you do Om Mahon, you can do everything goes through the central channel. Yeah. The central channel is this size. But when you do breathing, if you take a deep, strong breath, you can expand it. Central channel is big like this. Mm -hmm. That's why all goes inside like a Om, stays like a A, come out like a Om. Same if you If yeah. you look at the diagram in his book, the two right and left channels, like plumbing, they can fit in the bottom of the central channel. So that it goes, you breathe into that channel and then it goes, it loops into this, comes out to the central one. Like you have a plumbing joint, you know, at the base of the central channel. The right and left one go in and like that. And he has a picture of that in all of his books. Just one more clarification. When you say you're in the dream, you mean you're actually, you're seeing yourself in the dream. Or you, 
You are seeing yourself or you know you are dreaming. You are knowing. You, like you, you were dreaming last night, you were not there, but you kind of created the, the I don't want to say story, but <laughs> you, you kind of, you weren't seeing yourself doing actually the thing. Yes, yes. You were. Are you seeing you now you yourself? Do you see like now you yourself? Do I see actually my personal, myself yeah, yeah. within the dream? And am I doing the things in the dream? Or can I be just witnessing the things in the dream? Yeah, it's, it's the same question. Do you see now yourself? Not always. Exactly. You don't see yourself, but you know you are there, right? Mm -hmm. And you know you are seeing me. So the dream is the same thing. Sometimes you see yourself, sometimes you don't see yourself, but you know you are there. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? It's the same experiences. Most of the time we all say, oh, I want this, I this, 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 but we are not seeing ourselves. Mm -hmm. Maybe we are seeing only partially. <coughs> Right? We see our hands and some parts we see, but we don't see a whole part of ourselves. Mm -hmm. So dream is the same thing. Sometimes you see hands or your legs and this and that, but you know you are always there. But the one, even you don't see, you are not yourself as yourself is there and that's experiencing. And all experiences you know it's uh, your dream. Do you get that point? So there is a Tibetan uh, teaching, it says, our eyes can see everything, but the problem is eyes can't see themselves. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's a machine, it makes us seeing everything, but they don't see themselves. This is similar, we are in the dream, partially we know we are there, but sometimes there is only witness, we don't see ourselves. But this is the same thing also in the real life. Okay, thank you. Let's make a very quick announcement before... <laughs> not working. Okay, before everybody... No, it's working. Uh, it's working. Before everybody disperses. Um, so they've collected... Um, we're going to create some kind of forum so you can keep in touch after. Um, yeah, I was about to speak on that. Um, Eric and I just um, converted a group. Um, if you go on Facebook and type in You Talk Menla, it'll come up. It's our old garden volunteer group, but we're going to start using it for the Medicine Buddha... I personally want to thank both of you. Um, I've struggled with night terror since a kid, and I was taught lucid dreaming, but I realized that I was changed, transforming the dreams too much and not enjoying them and not just observing. And this weekend's really loosened me up. I'm not having that fear and that need to control every dream anymore. And so I thank you both for that, and everyone here for inspiring me to not be afraid of my dreams. Thank you. Uh, Eric is the one person who hasn't said anything. Oh, Eric, yes. Okay. Wow, well, um, again, yeah, thank you all for being such a wonderful group, and um, and it's always so great to be here with both Genla and Bob, and just the unique ways that you each can approach these incredible subjects and everything, so it's been such a treat to be here with, with all of you. Um, for myself, with the practice, it's interesting, I mean, I've many times gone in waves of really focusing on doing the dream practice and then amplifying dreams. And it's always so great to be in a place like this to get a, a kind of refresher of that. Um, I can say the experience that really struck me this time um, was connecting with the Om Anuttara and really going more into that visualization. Somehow I feel like, because also in between sessions I was doing a lot of Om Anuttara mantra and I felt like I kind of connected to that mantra more. Um, and so, so I really, I think that for me was a really interesting thing, really feeling, really feeling the throat with the, you know, the outer petals and then the Buddha inside and then that really subtle writing of the words inside, you know, Amitayus's throat, and trying to really get that extremely, but like, kind of transforming space where you can see something inside of something, and it's very, very fine. Threading the needle. Yeah, exactly. So I, I can say that probably was the most unique experience for me. Really. Mm -hmm. But, uh, okay. yeah, it was, it was so great. Okay, great job. Okay.
This video was brought to you in part through the generous support of Tibet House U.S. membership community and viewers like you. To learn more about the benefits of Tibet House membership, please visit tibethouse.us. Thanks for watching. Tashi Delek.